Patrick Henningsen and TNT. All right, folks, we're back. We're back. I'm joined right now by Freddie Ponton. Uh, he is an independent researcher. He's a journalist. Uh, he is also a contributor over at 21stCenturyWide.com. Great to have you back with us, Freddie. Now, uh, before the break, we talked about the new UN report, Freddie. I mean, are you as surprised as I am, Freddie, to see how this was laid out? It's quite a strong argument uh, that's bullet pointed here. And in a way, a lot of the statements here vindicate, I mean, it's about time, it's been eight months, vindicate our reporting uh, that we've been doing from the beginning. Uh, and some of us were attacked initially uh, as being, you know, uh, peddling Hamas disinformation and all the rest of it. But the receipts are pretty clear, aren't they, by now, Freddie? What did you make of this report? Well, the, this report is uh, is game over for, for whatever Israel uh, uh, claims, you know, uh, especially in relation to the October the 7th uh, attack. Now, nobody, as I say, uh, is arguing that uh, the, the Hamas uh, uh, went there and did, you know, and obviously uh, uh, went on, on to an operation there. There's no doubt about it. It happens, but it did not happen the way it was portrayed by Israel. So they seems to have been fabricating and organizing a complete uh, uh, hoax or propaganda operation uh, to get this kind of tractions, uh, which I describe as a way of justifying really what we've been saying over the last past seven, eight months, you know, uh, an onslaught on the, uh, the, the the Palestinian population. So this is not a war against uh, Hamas per se, but uh, uh, to justify all these death and all these civilians that have been killed uh, is, you know, they needed really an outrage uh, uh, in the world. And we know they they've sent uh, some kind of movies that they are kind of circulated in a diplomatic circles so that people can really be outraged. And uh, even President Biden talking about rape and babies being behaved or put in the oven. I mean, the, the whole story really took a, a, such a huge dimension. If we just put ourselves back, you know, uh, or, around that particular time, I mean, it was like it was a done deal. It was a fact, you know. Um, Hamas, you know, uh, there was mass rape, there was rape, there was baby, uh, 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 as I say, put in a oven, women's uh, opens, uh, wounds, and, you know, I mean, the whole thing was gruesome, literally, and we were told that we couldn't see the pictures because it was so bad. So the United Nations went on to, to investigate that because obviously the, at some stage this needed to be placed in the real world, in reality. And uh, the investigation clearly uh, very quickly should have been able to demonstrate and gather testimonies, pictures, videos, everything that really confirmed uh, what was presented by the Israeli government. And uh, Navi Pillay, the chair of the Commission for the OCHR, you know, the United Nations Human Rights uh, Office uh, for the High uh, Commissioners, uh, was given a mandate, a very clear legal mandate, to investigate that. And today, uh, she uh, issued a, a, a press release and a, and a very comprehensive report uh, which described basically uh, analysis and the entire investigation uh, conducted by an independent international commission of inquiry on the occupied Palestinian territories that includes East Jerusalem uh, and Israel as well. So we, uh, we, we, we've looked into this report and uh, uh, we extracted a couple of points which we, we found it crucial. And clearly at this stage, I mean, it's, uh, there's no appeal. There's no proof of any rape, let alone mass rape. Uh, and nothing was ordered uh, by Hamas, anything of this kind as well. And then perhaps the one I found to probably the most uh, appalling was that uh, uh, the Israeli uh, uh, forces were systematically targeting and subjecting Palestinians to sexual and gender-based violence, which is referred to as GBV in the acronym's terms. And uh, they were talking about, you know, uh, forcing public nudity, uh, Palestinian uh, citizens forced into public stripping, sexualized tortures and abuse and sexualized humiliations and harassment. And she confirms uh, uh, the commissioner that this incident took place during ground operation in conjunctions with evacuations and arrest, you know. So uh, I think they've had the time to, to really gather evidence. They wouldn't have come up with a report like this. That is really telling. And uh, 
uh, it's going to be very, very difficult because this document is going to be used as a reference document uh, in any international law court uh, in the world. I mean, ICC, ICJ, this coming straight from the United Nations. This is a mandated inquiry and the results are just basically a series of crime against humanity and, cr and war crimes, you know, without even talking about genocide, this is already a serious breach of international law. And I think Israel is going to have to, to answer to these crimes. Yeah, and they also found uh, crimes against humanity of extermination, along with yeah. the other sort of sex, sexual-based and gender-based crimes, you know, clearly designed to uh, torture, to humiliate, uh, to sort of, you know, devastate. Uh, the population was already taken on huge numbers of of casualties in terms of deaths. Uh, the number of para, uh, uh, amputees uh, is also shocking. Uh, it's one of the it's one of the highest reported ever uh, in any conflict zone uh, since records have been kept. It's really unbelievable. Thousands of amputees running around, walking around, limping around, or in beds uh, around Gaza. It's unbelievable, um, and it just goes on and on. The the evidence here, as you say, Freddie, this is going to end up uh, becoming, uh, you know, part of the file, as it were, for the International Courts of Justice, also for the war crimes at the ICC against individuals, um, and it's probably going to form the evidentiary basis for a uniting for peace resolution at the General Assembly. If the UN Security Council continues to drag its heels with the U.S. playing games, vetoing and all these other little protests going on, trying to keep uh, any kind of ceasefire. By the way, this latest Barago in the UN Security Council is a total U.S. bait and switch uh, to buy time to not have a ceasefire, then presenting it as a ceasefire. Uh, I think the Palestinians, the Russians also kind of uh, abstained from the vote for that very reason. I think yeah. they saw it was a bit of a scam uh, by the uh, crazies there in Washington working for Israel. But, Freddie, uh, the, the evidence is stacking up, and the well, historical it, case is it's solid. And this is not going to go away. There's no statute of limitations for any of this. Go ahead. No, it is not. And I think Guterres, Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, already alluded to, to the idea that uh, Israel was uh, to be considered as a state that, basically kills children, that basically murder children. And I think he's trying to prepare people to understand that uh, he probably already had a preview to these documents and understanding that this uh, eventually is going to have to be dealt with at the United Nations General Assembly and perhaps, you know, even uh, look at the possibility of excluding uh, Israel uh, from the United Nations itself. Because, you see, if you are in breach of international law, repeatedly for so many years there is a track record there of complete discontent for the law for the united nations uh, as a as an establishment uh and i think really it's we are not far to see something happening big in the united nations because i think they have had enough i think israel also understand that the people in the united nations have had enough of gideon and all this nonsense and uh, this uh, arrogance you know this kind of a uh, we have the United States behind us, so we can get away with any crimes. We can do pretty much whatever we want, and we're not listening, and especially attacking, of course, the United Nations in, uh, in such an open manner. Uh, this is not something diplomats are used to it. You know, there is a tone, there is a way, there is different things that can be discussed, but are, you know, bashing up the United Nations repeatedly and ignoring all the resolutions, hundreds of them. I think at some stage, the United Nations, if it so decide to retain his uh, his credibility in fa in the face of the world. It's going to have to 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 make an example of Israel and say this is not going to be tolerated. And I think that's exactly what where the ICC is going as well. We're not going to be intimidated any longer. And we might have been taking too much time to to get our act together. But at some stage, you know, when the establishment itself is threatened. Uh, then I think that we're gonna might see something. So ICG, ICC plus this report, which is going to be presented as evidence, is gonna be 
uh, raising some uh, some serious eyebrows over the next few weeks and months. You know, so yeah, we we must expect some some big decisions coming out uh, of the UN and the ICC. I know a lot of people that very uh, obviously uh, have very little faith in these institutions, and I and I don't blame them because they should have been doing what they're doing now a long time ago. So better late than never. Unfortunately, too many civilians had to die in a terrible circumstances. Too much cruelty was allowed to happen. And I think anybody that has a common sense, a human heart, uh, will see that, you know, uh, I think the Palestinians are entitled to justice. I think the word genocide is not strong at all because it has nothing to do with cruelty in terms of killing people. It has to do with the set of conditions that you put on a group partially on the group, you know, and not allowing them basically to self-determination. And that's what the siege on Gaza was and always been. And that's why Hamas is asking for the siege to be lifted, because it needs to be lifted and it, they need to be able to go freely wherever they want. They need and they have the right of return. This is absolutely inalienable right under international law. And Israel, it doesn't matter with the might of Israel and its army, they cannot ignore that. There will be consequences for the actions. And here, here's a clip just to round this out from Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State on the tarmac with Air Force Two, it looks like. Listen to this one. And of course, what okay. separates Israel, the United States, and other democracies when it comes to incredibly difficult situations like this is our respect for international law uh, and, as appropriate, uh, the laws of war. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we know that uh, Israel will take uh, all of the uh, precautions that, uh, that it can, just as we would. And again, that's what separates us uh, from Hamas. There you go, Freddie. Clown World 101 right there. I, I, I think the United States has contributed to more death than Hamas itself. <laughs> if you really look at the numbers, I mean, you take out the military because, you know, when uh, you, you are... Uh, basically under occupation, you have the right to defend yourself within the context of international law, which means that military targets are absolutely legitimate. So if you take all these military that were killed on October the 7th, how many civilians do you have left? And and, oh, and, and my conversion goes towards how many, you know, weapons provided by the United States and other countries have actually killed civilians in gaza so if you're going to claim on international televisions that you know you you you, you promote the democratic value and your your respect for international law which Hamas doesn't you actually your score in terms of killing civilian is bigger than the one in hamas and that speaks for itself so as far as i'm concerned you know i can't take these guys seriously you know no, yes. no and, we sh and we shouldn't. We shouldn't. Freddie Ponton, independent researcher, journalist based in France. Appreciate you coming on TNT this week. Thanks, been my pleasure. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Great analysis, as always, from Freddie. Top of the hour news headlines coming up on the other side. Daniel McAdams, director of the Ron Paul Institute. On the Euro shakeup, but more than that, what's the U.S. State Department doing? Targeting American journalists via Ukraine politicians what's this all about we'll find out on the other side stay with us